Ugh. It's been a long run. You know, we've had about four weeks of video lecture. I, I hope you guys, you know, I hope you guys like this. You know, it, it might be the wave of the future. I don't know. I could always be teaching like this. I hope not. But uh, anyways, let's get started. We're talking, we're going to finish up international monetary relations. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, monetary regimes throughout history so that you guys get kind of a background of how the world has used currency uh, throughout time. First, as always, let's talk about some current events. Um, so more printed money. Apparently today Congress passed another coronavirus bill. This one is to help more small businesses. Unfortunately, it does not include a $1,200 check for the people. But reading this article, they are planning another round of that. So uh, it could be, could be not in the coming future in the next six weeks. So, you know, be prepared for more Trump bucks, I guess. Also, you know, there's more, more jobless people in America than there has ever been before in the history of our nation. And so this is going to be a problem that we're going to have to take on as well. And, you know, how? how? Hopefully these people have jobs when we come out of this. Because we could be the greatest broke nation ever. We could go from the top to the bottom in a matter of six months because of this thing. So it is definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, they're doing everything they can. And you know what? Maybe this is another reason why the government's talking about giving us more money. Some people are saying it could be up to 2000 uh, for every individual. So uh, things to think about, I guess. And while the world is sick, the United States is sick, um, there is just about 3,000 here in Utah sick. Uh, North Korea has a sick leader, supposedly. Reading this uh, through this article and reading a few articles about it, nobody really knows. It's just that he hasn't been seen in public in uh, weeks. So people are starting to suspect that he may have fallen gravely ill and that um, he is brain dead and that he's in a coma. Uh, there's a lot of speculation around, but nobody has any really hard facts. And because of the lack of hard facts, they're speculating who would be the next leader. A lot of people are talking about a vacuum of power in North Korea that could really put in danger a lot of North Koreans, uh, especially if it's some of the more hardline, uh, more war enthusiastic people inside his administration. But some people are saying it could be his younger sister that is pictured right here. And uh, people are calling her Little Kim. And I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, so we got to talk about international monetary regimes. We got to get through this. Um, this shouldn't be a long video because I don't think, you know, without uh, interaction from you guys, there's not really a whole lot I can say. I can kind of explain it and kind of give you some of the problems with it. But yeah, so the first one we're going to talk about is specie. Now, it's like the first, you know, currency in the world. Like and this is, and this happened all the way back into the Romans. I mean, so, so all the way up until about 1820s, 1870, People were using specie, which are actual gold and silver coins. Now, the problem with this, the problem with this is that um, a lot of people would uh, shave down the coins, stealing the gold for themselves and still using the coins for their appropriate value. And thus, they were able to make, if they had enough of these shavings, they were able to make more coins. They called this signorage. It's a French word. Signorage. Right. Uh, and then there's another issue here. You know, uh, we use coinage in, in, in our currency. We use pennies. And typically we think of them used uh, as copper. But since 1983, there hasn't been a pure copper coin. Most of the copper coins that we have are zinc and are barely, barely, barely copper co uh, coated. So, yeah, I mean, uh, seniorage is a problem that has attacked currency since the beginning of time. It wasn't until the 1820s that green, uh, green... <laughs> Great Britain started an actual gold standard where they would give you like a certificate. I have a certificate uh, that says I need this much gold, right? So you're like our dollar says, okay, this is $1. It used to be that we could take that $1 for actual gold. Uh, and, and Great Britain started this in the 1820s, but it really picked up after 1870. And we call this the classical gold standard, that you get a certificate or a dollar or a, some form of currency that you could take to the bank and turn it in to real, for real gold. Here's where things start to get 
a little interesting, right? In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was put in place by Woodrow, Dr. Woodrow Wilson, the only president to have a PhD. I know I've told you guys that before, but the Federal Reserve is an independent agency and bank. It is not controlled by our government. I shouldn't say in any way because it is controlled in one way. When the term of the Fed Federal Reserve's president ends, the president of the United States gets to choose a new Federal Reserve chairman. Now, that's the only way in which it's controlled by our government. In other words, they are completely independent and can do whatever they want. Now, the um, United States was the first to put this into place, but now most countries have a uh, central bank, uh, kind of like a Federal Reserve knockoff uh, in their country. Now, not a lot was known about macroeconomics and how, in fact, e economics worked at all back when this was created. So as a matter of fact, when in 1929, when the depression happened here in the United States, the Federal Reserve had absolutely no idea, zero idea how to stop it. In fact, what they did made things worse. So what the Federal Reserve can do in, in our country, their primary response, again, is to control the money supply, much like we talked about on Monday. So they control the money supply. Now, in a crisis like this, we have learned through their mistakes that the best thing to do is to turn up the money supply. You want to turn that thing on. You want to get the spigot going. In the 30s, they did the exact opposite. What they did was they turned it completely off. And when you turn it completely off, many, 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 many people were hurt. A lot of people lost their jobs. Uh, we thought it was the biggest job loss we would ever see till today. Uh, and, and so they pretty much bungled that whole thing and made the depression much, much, much worse. But giving the Fed uh, power to control the money supply allowed us to move away from a gold standard. And not only that, we were entering into World War I. And all of a sudden, we didn't have enough gold to make the kind of money that we needed to, right? So we moved away from the gold standard. We moved to a floating rate system, essentially a fiat dollar system, uh, so that we could create more money, so that we could go to war. And, um, you know, it, it happened. The gold standard fell apart after World War I. Uh, Great Depression hurt cooperation. All of a sudden, countries weren't cooperating with each other the way they used to. And then in 1933, remember, America was famous. And what made us so powerful so early on was that we always, quote unquote, paid our debts. Well, in 1933, we didn't do that because taking us af off the gold standard, pretty much all those people left with those certificates saying like, I have a certificate saying I need this much gold. All of that was abandoned. All of a sudden, you didn't have that gold that you thought you did. And so for the first time ever, America essentially didn't pay its debts. Nobody talks about this. Nobody considers this not paying our debts just because we pay, we changed our policy. And that's an interesting thing that America has held on to that reputation for paying its debts, even though in 1933, Roosevelt took us off the gold standard and left all those people with gold certificates absolutely hanging. But, you know, after the World Wars, we needed a new system, right? The world needed to cooperate in its monetary policy. So what we did was we cut up with the something called the Bretton Woods system. And it's called that because a bunch of bankers from all over the world got together in a place called Bretton Woods. And in Bretton Woods, they decided to come up with a very interesting and unique way of maintaining a global world policy, right? And so what they did was all these countries that joined the Bretton Woods system fixed their currency to the US dollar. And the US dollar... <laughs> fixed their policy to gold, which we never really did. But that kind of lie, that kind of miracle, kept global currency stable. And you know what else it did? It made the US dollar the most important currency in the entire world, essentially making us the most powerful country in the world. And when we became the most powerful in the country, the most powerful country in the world, we used that power. And we still use that power today. And right now, China is very upset that the US dollar is still the most important currency. They would like to revamp that currency and create a international currency. That hasn't happened yet. 
But with COVID-19 happening, who knows what could happen in the near future. But keep in mind, since all currency is fixed to the U.S. dollar, keep in mind, at this point in the world, who really controls all the money in the world? It's not the United States government. It's the United States Federal Reserve, an independent bank slash agency, meaning that our government still has no control over the currency that we use. That brings us to JFK. Uh, yeah, I, of course, how could I not end this class with a little bit of conspiracy theory? The things written on this slide are absolute fact, okay? Kennedy opposed free trade. Most people like to think that Kennedy was a, a free trader. Absolutely wrong. He believed that industry should serve the nation. He believed almost that he should nationalize certain industries. Now, this is the same kind of talk you hear about communist countries. Uh, he thought that we should develop our own, our, our own energy instead of buying oil from abroad. We should use the oil we have here, which strangely is exactly what we're doing right now. But there's even more about this that I want to talk to you guys about, about the Federal Reserve. Now, here's where things get a little controversial, okay? Now, on June 4th, 1963, the president signed Executive Order 11110, and that gave the U.S. president authority to issue currency. Now, keep in mind, the only people, the only agency able to uh, issue currency in this country at this point was the Federal Reserve. He then ordered the creation of 4 billion U.S. notes. Now, if you take a look at your dollar right now, it says Federal Reserve note on it. And so what he wanted to do was some people believe that he wanted to replace the Federal Reserve notes to re return money creation to the United States government. Instead, like essentially cutting out the Fed, essentially killing off the Fed, the Federal Reserve. But four or five months later, he was assassinated. I'm not saying that it was because of his ideas to take over the Fed, but I'm not not saying it's because of his ideas to take over the Fed. Now, if we look at the system that we have now since 1973, in 19, and one night in 1973, this man right here, uh, Nixon, comes out on television and says that no way, in no way are we any way connected to the, to the gold standard. Uh, instead, he broke that lie, right? Because we weren't really connected to the gold standard before then either. But him coming out and saying that in front of the entire nation, this is a picture from his actual address, it allowed him to increase the production of dollars even further. Now, why would he want to do that? Well, he was fighting a war, right? There was Vietnam going on at the time. So he needed to be able to uh, print a lot of money to be able to pay for the war. And we can see uh, through this uh, graph right here, the amount of power, the amount of buying power we lost in America since that announcement. Keep in mind, it's like right here, he announced in 1973 that we are no longer connected to the gold standard. We are a fiat currency. And then look, just uh, it's just fell off a cliff. And even today, we are still extremely low compared to where we were before 1973, which, you know, it could be considered uh, an atrocity in terms of what we do to our what we did to our own currency. OK, that's, you know. I think that's about it. Um, I thought I gave you guys a, as good of, of video lectures as I possibly could to help you guys with the test. Um, I'm working on the review. It should be up later today. Um, you guys have been awesome. Uh, thank you for everything. Um, I, I believe I'm going to have an actual Big Blue Button review, uh, which you guys should be getting an email about later, I don't know, today or tomorrow, uh, to discuss when we should do it. I'm thinking it's going to be late afternoon on Monday. Uh, that's the last day I can talk to you guys. But I just want to let you guys know, thank you for everything. You guys have been awesome. Please fill out the class evaluation. It helps me and the school. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you guys, don't hesitate to email me or text message me. You can find my number in the syllabus. Uh, and or just leave a comment below. Please uh, smash that like button, you know. Um, all right, I'll see you guys uh, hopefully next semester. And uh, I will definitely talk to you guys on Monday. Bye, guys.